We all recognise the importance of teamwork. It is a 21st century skill, highly valued in the workforce, yet by university, students hate working in teams with a passion. Too often, we do not teach them how to work in teams, the advantages and the roles of leadership and fellowship. But collaboration and teamwork are built into the digital technologies curriculum at all levels. At F2, students should be managing their own roles within teams. By 3 to 8, students should be taking responsibility for specific roles within projects, with increasing levels of collaboration and teamwork. And by 9 and 10, students should be fully managing and coordinating teams to collaborate with others locally and globally. But students need to learn the advantages of teamwork. Rather than it being an imposition or a chance to socialise with friends, they do recognise this for sport, where they can see the advantages. And we need to make this just as clear in project-based learning. Teams bring a range of skills to projects, a variety of viewpoints, and an increased adaptability to the ways of solving problems. They can make teams more efficient, everyone working to their particular strengths. And they can build acceptance of diversity and difference, helping students to be open to involving others with different genders, ages, ethnicities, breaking down stereotypes, including adults, the local community, or international experts. And this better prepares students for solving problems. Problems that may involve demographic changes, globalization issues, generation gaps, or generally just conflict, and many other advantages. But there are challenges. Resistance to change, communication difficulties, social dynamics, and general classroom management. Diversity can increase conflict. But this can be turned into a positive. Through projects, exploiting positive conflict can lead to healthy competition, spur on creativity, and motivate students. It can bring to light and highlight problems so that they can be addressed. And conflict can identify what is really important for students and let them work to these strengths. Now, successful management of conflict can also build self-esteem and resilience. So what approaches to team formation and dynamics exist? There are many. But firstly, will students play a role in determining their teams, deciding on roles, managing conflicts? This all involves moving from a teacher to a student yeah. level, from EPBL to IPBL. Determining who will be involved in their project teams and the roles they will have is an important aspect of strategic management and can change as projects develop and they identify the problem they wish to solve. Do students have the right mix of expertise to tackle the problem? Should other stu students be invited to join the group? Do they have too much overlap with some, where some members would be better off joining other groups? Can some gaps be addressed by outside experts? This is a difficult process for students. Social pressures are an important factor that we need to consider and the teacher support is needed in this area. But there are approaches where students can apply to join teams, develop resumes of skills useful to, to the teams, assigning team leaders, a student selection panel, anonymous voting processes, or an external body to make team selections. All can be useful in developing the right mix of students for a team. But putting the best interest of the project and the team above personal interests is not often asked of students outside of the sports field. It is also common in projects to assign responsibilities and roles to team members. But less common is monitoring these roles, with team leaders having to make the call to change roles if they're not working out, though firing students is probably a, a step too far. But the most important aspect of collaboration is in seeking out assistance. Seeking help from someone in another team if their expertise is vitally needed. 
or from their teacher or other teachers or other adults, experts and organizations anywhere in the world. And this can extend beyond ideas. We often do it for research, but outsourcing other aspects of their project, getting students in another country to collect data or images, using code written by others, having a component 3D printed by an external company, having a marketing company produce their promotional materials, or including external students, adults and experts as team members. This can be challenging for us as teachers, where the product has been the focus rather than the process, and validating student authorship a high priority. But in challenging students to engage in real-world projects, we need to progressively allow them to do so authentically and build how students may do this into our management and assessment of student learning.